Hey guys, Volus C here, hope that you're doing well. Want to take you through a strategy that I'm starting to use for the Wadroon faction of Conquest The Last Argument of Kings, tabletop war game by Parabellum, as you guys know. So the dinosaurs are extinct. We're going to try a infantry only list. Well, there is a little regiment of brutes that sneaks in there as well. But the main idea is that um, although I like the Thunder Riders and the Tontor and the new Winglord Predator is amazing. It turns out that there is a specific strategy that really synergizes a lot of the stuff that you could do for infantry. And I want to sort of talk to you about this because it's been a little while since that patch dropped from Parabellum and we've had the chance to play some games and really theorize things and talk to one another about it. And as usual, I feel like they haven't quite got things perfectly right. Um, the overall patch is probably in a better place than it was before. <laughs> um, we certainly had a lot of stuff which was just really spiking in overpoweredness. But my concern is that they may have introduced a few things that haven't really been very well placed to play tested or thought out. I really want to ask you guys what you think and post your comments below about whether there are any, you know, currently current problems that they should really be fixing sooner rather than later, or if it's just a matter of me not really understanding the counter or the the, the play around for really dealing with this stuff. So without further ado, I want to sort of talk you through my thinking about Wadroon at the moment, or at least one way that you can do it. So what I'm talking about really is the tribes keyword. And uh, that applies when you come over here and you look how the chieftain has the tribes battlefield role and uh, so do the veterans. It's a sort of a key um, word that you can put in there. And it means that things that apply to the tribes will apply to veterans. Where's the best place for the cam? Down here. So my build starts off with the Chieftain, and the Chieftain's going to be the Warlord. This is a Foot Chief, he's not the Thunder Rider Chief, and uh, although you can take Conquest, which is a very popular choice for when you take the uh, the Chief Warlord, giving you access to those uh, Conquest abilities, and of course the Chosen of Conquest in your Warband, I'm not going to go down that path. I'm actually going to make him a Chief of War, because that means that when you come to Masteries, you can take Teachings of War Authority, which only can be taken by the warlord following the cult of war and it means that blooded braves and uh, veterans can't be broken at all and that's for the entire army it seems a bit steep at 40 points but we'll talk about why that is is a big deal in a second so the chief does a number of things when he's the warlord concentrating assault means that crushing force and uh, covers the entire battlefield crushing force is where you give nearby units plus two impact when they charge, so long as they're chanting the battle cry. So that means that all of your veterans are going to have that um, that plus two impact when they charge in, which is kind of a big deal. Crushing Force does, does say tribes, though, so if you take any braves, which we are going to, they also get plus two impact. So it's sort of like a, just a free thing. Um, normally, it's only within 10, but of course, Warlord gives it to everybody. Now, he's got this other ability, Tempo, which again applies to tribes, which gives them Vanguard, and uh, this says that it affects all friendly tribes units. And uh, these buffs just happen all the time, even if the guy's not on the battlefield and even if he's dead. So what that means is that when you, when you take Slingers as well, they also get Vanguard. The veterans have Vanguard. And the veterans also get Flurry as well from the Chief. So that allows for a build like this, where you have two basic units of veterans, two basic uh, units of Slingers. All of them get Vanguard. And the veterans get the plus two impact when they charge with a battle cry. They always have flurry. They can never be broken. So you can sort of see where this is going. We're not having to spend any additional points on upgrades. They, um, you know, they're modestly priced. But I, what I feel you get for 170 points there is just very, very, very much below market value uh, in terms of what you pay. You know, you get above market value in terms of, of the, the benefits, really. Because again, this, this is a really solid regiment when you consider all of the things affecting it. So movement five, but you're vanguarding onto the battlefield. So that's three fives plus the standard bearer. So you come on 16 inches, allowing you to score from some objectives uh, turn two, right? In close combat, they don't really need inspired, but they've got flurry there anyway. And uh, the chieftain is chanting for war, of course. Veterans, Forged in Battle means that they can add a couple of uh, conquests or a couple of war tokens when they activate, making it a lot easier for them to just chant at Tier 2 war, giving them um, Cleave 1. So 16 attacks with Flurry at Cleave 1. Even like this, this isn't really a, like an elite 
unit of heavy infantry, but it feels like one when you attack with that much damage. The fact that they can never be broken is important because it means that they can just capture an objective, and even if your opponent batters them with spells and magic um, after they've activated, uh, they can't be broken. So as long as you've got at least one stand there, it's still able to seize. Also, if your opponent does a bit of damage before you get to play the card and breaks you by killing two stands, well, they're not broken, so they can still charge and get the benefit of their impact hits and so on and so forth. But the third thing stacking in there to make this 40-point um, upgrade worth it, I believe, is the queen. So you take the queen, you give her a unit of braves. I like uh, five stands of braves, make her a war queen. She doesn't really need anything else there. And uh, what this means is that the, the queen can always heal stands of veterans because they're never going to be broken and her own braves can never be broken. So this amazing draw event here where she heals uh, four infantry uh, wounds within 10 all the time is just amazing and it makes the braves obviously much more survivable she's naturally got stoic in there so just very very well priced 100 for the queen 200 for the braves very very cheap i quite like the uh warbred as well the warbred are tribes but unfortunately they're not really getting any of the benefits from authority because it doesn't include them in that list and um, for Crushing Force, this says Infantry Tribes. And for Tempo, this says Friendly Infantry Tribes as well. So the first thing that I would change in this list probably is the Warbred. But we'll come back to that later, right? So the other, the other Warband, of course, is just simply going to be another Chief and another group of veterans and another group of slingers. So <laughs> this warband is identical to the first one. Only difference between being um, difference being that this one isn't the chief. But of course, once you've got one war chief, his supremacy ability always applies to everything. And same with authority. That's always always applying to everything. So this is just a duplicate warband. And now you've got four regiments of veterans, which will always march 16 inches onto the board. They will always have flurry. They can never be broken. They always get impact plus two if they're chanting the battle cry. They always generate two cards, which can be conquest cards. Each, um, you know, two of those veteran units have chiefs in them. And then, of course, you've got four regiments of slingers to just continue pelting them. And the slingers are all marching 18 inches onto the board when they start the round. So what that kind of looks like is that when you um, start the game, you're picking one unit of um slingers to just automatically show up and then you're rolling four or less on three dice and you're typically getting two uh, regiments and you just immediately move three uh, units of slingers out into the midline that is going to mean that if your opponent moves anything onto the board uh, they generally want to avoid that 24 inch threat range where the slingers in the following turn can chant the battle cry and move six and shoot 18 so that is a 24 inch threat range and they're going to pump out effectively 13 shots which will have torrential fire so at 13 shots on threes you maybe hit six or seven um uh, little stones there and you're going to add another three or four um, from torrential fire meaning that your, your opponent's suffering like nine or ten hits and there's not very much they can do about that and then of course once once they march charge your line to tie you up the problem there is that you've got other flanking units of slingers to just shoot at the thing that's doing the march charging, and you've got veterans in behind them. If there are any hills on your side of the table, you put the sling on the hill, you put the veterans right in front of the hill so the veterans are not on the hill, so they're not blocking line of sight, and they, of course, tank for the, the slingers. Very, very powerful combination. Another thing I, f I feel is very important with building a list at the moment is that you want to have really as many activations as you can. This list has 13 because you've got the 10 regiments plus three characters. And because Supremacy, getting the, the benefit for the plus one, minus one is really about which player previously lost the role or won the role. Um, having more cards doesn't put you at a disadvantage. In my opinion, it always puts you at an advantage. So you want to kind of go for that. The thinking being that in your first few activations, you are either getting troops into position or if you've hit the mid game, usually it's the slingers going first to shoot things before they die. And then you just waste a lot of time during the middle with your characters, queens healing things during the mid game. And then the very last card is usually going to be veterans charging or warbred charging or repositioning, etc. Another thing which is uh, very, very strong here is that you've got a lot of duplicate uh, cards. So if you, for example, have 
one unit of veterans activating very early in your stack and then another you know very late in the stack then when you draw the veterans card you can pick any of the four regiments you have on the table and that's really really crucial because it allows you the luxury of deciding whether you know there is an opportunity already if your opponents move something in range to attack now before more damage is suffered from the veterans in this part of the battlefield or whether it's another part of the battlefield where you just want to waste time and come back to them later very very flexible and the same can be done with the slingers because you've got four slingers cards as well so I'm kind of liking it, but I'm also kind of not liking that Parabellum um, seem to have just been happy to give out these abilities which apply to like the army army like, as a global thing. I remember when people thought that the um, Im Imperial officer's supremacy was um, overpowered because it gave every infantry unit in the Hundred Kingdoms vanguard and now you can just build something similar with wadroon which is effectively more powerful because vanguard is more effective in this context so i just i just don't know about that i just don't really feel like this has been play tested particularly well and um i certainly would would change things around I've only played two practice games so far, and um, the way that those games went, the, the first game was unfortunately a bit of a miss game because um, I accidentally treated the barrage value of the slingers as um, pre-patch, so I was thinking, oh, I'm barrage four, torrential fire takes me up to barrage five. That's not how it works. They're barrage three now. So there was a, a short phase of the game where I was rolling too many dice and just getting f a few too many hits. But I probably would have won against that list anyway because it was... Wadroon versus Dwegum, and he was just castling one side of the battlefield on the, the melee uh, scenario. So I was able to just score freely on the other side of the battlefield and just slowly chip away at his regiments while he was taking a lot longer to bust through my lines on the other side. And although the the sorcerers were doing a very good job blasting me with magic over and over again, the slingers just were continually um, eating into his tokens and uh, reducing number of wounds remaining on the dragons. And I feel like eventually I would have been able to pivot around and get those charges off onto one of his objectives, meaning that um, during the mid to late game, he would have fallen way behind on, on, on points and um, there wouldn't have been able to, wouldn't have been a way to come back against that much Wadroon, and he certainly wouldn't have had time to come over and, and, and take over my side of the battlefield. This, the, the veterans are just too tough, I think. The second game that I managed to play was against Nords, and this was your typical uh, style of of um, of list where you've got uh, three characters and eight regiments, which is like a sort of standard for conquest. But the thing about that was that the Bow Chosen were outranged by the Slingers, and everything else you know that wanted to march charge me would immediately get counterattacked by veterans. And I had, of course, the Queen able to do a bit of healing on the Slingers after a period of time. And um, he slowly just ran out of stuff. So I'm not really sure what the Nord counter to that is. Um, I think that more advanced Nords builds probably do have some kind of um, spam strategy with a lot of veterans and maybe a lot of bow chosen. I don't know if the Trolls build is still good, but I think, I think the Opportunist's um, bow chosen is still a good way to go. And maybe you need more of like the new pigs, that kind of thing. Um, Bear Sarks, I think that they are a really cool unit with the additional action, but they're still quite flimsy. So if they get counterattacked by anything at all, they're generally going to, to cave. Even with Tenacious 2, like I was able to hit him with one charge from one minimum veterans unit that didn't have the Chieftain, and they were easily able to just delete the uh, the Bear Sarks because you're just hitting them with too much stuff. And then they've got to take result, um, or like resolve checks on top of that, etc., etc. So that happened. Um, just coming back to this army list, let's just talk about a few ways that this could indeed be improved. And in fact, um, I do want to acknowledge the fact that some people prefer um, the Chosen of Conquest, and maybe that is actually better. They are speakers, so that's the thing that I, I, I don't love about them is that, let's just grab this. So if we change this to, um, uh, let's take away authority, excuse me. All right, we've got to make him the Warlord. We make him Conquest, then we can bring in the Chosen of Conquest. So these guys are uh, the cults, Cult of Conquest. They don't get all of the really cool things from the, the, the Chieftain here. So you might want to make a different, different character, your Warlord. But they're more aggressive than the veterans in the sense that that free action is what you're using instead of having Vanguard, instead of having Flurry, instead of having Immune to Being Broken, and and so on. Um, I do believe that you get Crushing Force on that. 
Oh, no, it's still only tribes. Okay, so they can't get the plus two impact. That would have been pretty cool. So some people like that variation of the build, and I, I, I certainly understand that. So if we come back to this again, we go war, and uh, what else can we really do here to, to change this? Given that the war bread aren't really something which benefit from being tribes, uh, we could remove them and put something else in there. The thing about it, though, is that um, the war bread give this list a bit more cleave, and I quite like the threat range that they have, so I still feel like they're the better inclusion. Some people may also feel like we've got too many slingers, so if we took away one unit of slingers, we could then come in with like a tontor or something, and that fits perfectly, mind you, so that might be the better answer. Again, I don't know. Um, we've got a lot of shooting there. Having a quaddle as well, just to really double down on that shooting would be really cool, or an apex predator um, might be nice. But it's hard to say. I mean, the 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 brutes just slot into this list so well, and having four, four slingers, I've never really felt like I regretted having that many slingers um, in the in the the games that I've played so far. So this is probably one that I'll continue trying. Hope you guys enjoyed this little. Uh, little strategy pep talk for Wadroon. Um, I'll hopefully have a few more bat reps. Not too sure if I'll keep playing this specific list, but um, I feel like it needs a bit more testing. I need to play it against people who really, um, really sort of like have strong prepared builds for this kind of thing. And then we'll see how it goes. Until then, uh, catch you next time and uh, have a great day.